All right, welcome back to another Bass 66 Chevelle video here. This is my 78 F-150 here. And this is a little update here on this uh, heater blower motor situation. And I just want to correct myself that the part number I give y'all will not work. Not without doing some modifying. So this blower motor, I've had nothing but a nightmare trying to replace this thing here. Cannot find nothing on it whatsoever, and uh, did a quite a bit of research on these heater blower motors. I tried to find an NOS one online, couldn't really find much of anything. I found a few, but I found some that you know didn't look the greatest. But uh, anyway, uh, I think I finally have truly solved this mystery here. And this heater core blower motor, it still works. But the problem is the bearings, I think, are getting bad, and like everybody else, you know, it's no way to oil them is what everybody says. So, we look at our heater blower motor, the first thing we notice is we look at all the views of it. There's no hole on this heater blower motor. There's no tube whatsoever. Okay, we look at all the sides. There's nothing there, nothing on the top, nothing on this side over here. And there's nothing on the bottom as well. Alright, now what I've tried to show here is I'm going to show y'all on my 69C10 what I'm talking about here. Alright, so we look at our blower motor and we had this tube here on our blower motor and on my Ford it has this hole on the side. Now this is my C10 here. But on our Ford, this is what I'm talking about. It had this little tube here. We'll take a look at our 89, and I'm not sure if it has it or not. All right, so here's our 89 here. And this one actually does have that heater tube on it. And that hole that I'm talking about is actually on the side here, and that's where this tube right here connects. All this does, plain and simple, is it keeps this blower motor from burning up more or less. It basically self cools itself. That's all that's for. And it's been nothing but a nightmare trying to find a blower motor for that 78 Ford without this hole on the side. So hopefully this shows a lot better detail what I'm talking about. So here's my Chevelle here. Now we're missing our heater box out of it. But I believe as well it originally too does not have that tube on it. And I think they just started doing that, I believe in the 70s on a lot of vehicles. Not sure on that, don't quote me. But hopefully y'all get a lot better understanding what I'm going through. All right, so this is my 59 Etzel here. And uh, it's pretty much got the exact same blower motor, I believe, until I pull it out to know for sure. But I'm pretty sure it's the exact same uh, blower motor as my F-150 over there. but. I wanted to look at this motor and as well it does not have any tube whatsoever on it to self cool itself there's nothing on it at all so this should apply to the galaxies and all the other stuff as well but if you look at this side over here I rub my hand all the way around there's no tube whatsoever or any hole on this blower motor. Alright. So I'm going to walk on over here. And. It's been nothing but a nightmare. Trying to find a blower motor for this thing. And I think what I've concluded here. Is in their system. They have an error. Evidently. Now I've looked all over the place. This is the one. Right here. Part number 35502 that's supposed to be for the 78 Ford that's supposed to fit it. Well, it will. But, if we take a look at it, we open our box up here. You know, we have verified here. If you look at it, it's 35502, the part number right here. Get a little bit clearer. There we go. 35502 in that top corner right there. And if we take it out, it has the hole in it. 
right there. So it was actually made to have that tube on it. Right there. And all this is is to quote unquote self cool itself. So as that fan is blowing, the air is circulating through this motor right here and help cooling it off. That's all it is doing. Plain and simple. Every one of these blower motors I've looked up has this hole on the side. So evidently, something in their system it keeps pulling up the newer blower motors for the 78 Ford. And it doesn't matter if you type in a 73 or 79. For some reason, every one of them has this hole on it. And it's so hard online to find good pictures of this blower motor because the way they take the picture is they may have one you know where it's sitting like this well you can't see that hole on it and then they you know they take one in the front here like that and then they take one in the back here like that and then they take one in this side oh okay it looks like the correct one there's no hole on it but yet if you were to pick it up that hole was right there See, they're hiding it up underneath the way they take the pictures. Nobody takes good pictures online. They need a whole 360 degree view of it so that you can see right there it has a hole in it. All right. Now, I thought about taking and plugging that off and, you know, installing it. Because it will work, but it has that hole in it. And I didn't want rain to get in it because, as a matter of fact, it actually just rained the other night. And I didn't want rain to get in it and ruin it. And then I didn't want to plug it off because then you have an ugly grommet there. Let me show you how to solve this problem quick and easy. And you actually have another solution you can do as well. So on this is a different blower motor. Now I typed in a 69 F100. And this is what come up. It is part number PM351. It is a Murray blower motor. Of course it's made in China. But if we open it up here, take it out of the packaging. Get this thing out. All right. So I take now that we're packaging there, and I took it out and. We're looking for that hole right there on this one. Well, this is a PM351. And if we look at it, there's the part number. Make sure it's in the correct box. PM351, 12 volt. They're both 12 volt. I guess this might be another part number. 201708. And we're going to take a look at it here. And as you can see, we look all the way around it. There is no hole whatsoever for that tube so it can, quote unquote, self cool itself. That hole does not exist. Now, this, we want to lay, lay it over. Because this one was so hard to find pictures of. But I finally found somebody on eBay that was selling this one right here. That had a picture of, you know, again, like if you were holding it in your hand, of 360 degree view of it. You know, there's no hole in it, so we are good. Thank goodness. And then uh, we look at this one here. I want to compare it because the one thing I was worried about was quite a few different things. The bolt pattern between here and here, the spacing on both of these, I wanted to make sure was the same. It is. And we want to make sure these shafts were the same. They both have the keys in it, just like that. Have that little flat spot on both of them. We made sure they were the same. We made sure they were the same length. And they are. Actually, turn them like this. Let me turn them right there. There we go. Hold on, let's set them on something flat. Alright, so I laid them down. That way, y'all can actually see the difference. But the shafts here, they both have this keyway on both of them. We made sure these were the same, the distance between these two studs. 
because that's important because that's where it bolts to a cover it has a cover on that when you remove those two bolts right there that's how it attaches and then we make sure our shafts were the same length and this one is just a tiny bit longer but it will not matter the only really difference that I can see on this whole thing is the wiring if we pay attention to our wiring on here our wiring is the exact same they're the same same gauge wires and all but if we look closely they come out the pigtail comes out right here towards the front and then on this one it comes out towards the back originally come out on the front just like that now this will not matter because I was worried that when we install that you know our wires are going to be had to go through that wire firewall there and then we we'll have to worry about it rubbing and you know eventually causing issues. But I looked at it and I think we're going to be okay because the end of this uh, blower motor right there is just about at the front, and then this firewall is kind of beveled in the way it's stamped. You had this kind of beveled in a little bit, and I guess that's what you would call it. So it should clear just fine. So we should not have issues with that. And uh, that's really about the only difference. Now this one does have studs on the back. That doesn't matter. This one's flush. This one just has rivets on the original. But that will not matter. Now if we look at our back here, I'm going to flip these over. If we look at this one. Look at that one. They look pretty close to the same. It has two little notches right here on this one. This is the one for the 78. This is the one for the 69. The more gloss one is for the 69. This more flat looking one, like the satin kind of finish here, is for the 78. So keep that in mind. But this one kind of looks more original, kind of, if you look at it there, except for these studs. But if you look at this one, you kind of look at the original. I mean, it's not perfect but you know it's closer anyway that one's got two rivets on it but anyway so if you need a blower motor here for a 78 f-150 and honestly I would say a 73 to a 79 f-150 this is what you need that way you do not have that tube and this hole on the side because when I ordered it everywhere has this hole on the side and I don't want that out exposed in there on the firewall there and exposed in the open where it can get rained in so that's how we solve that issue and you don't need it you really don't need it because this one if you look at it you know it's no way it's actually too cool it so really that's the only really downfall is there's no way to really self cool itself but in reality I mean you really don't need to cool it this one doesn't have that tube either they doesn't have them anyway and they last it this long so anyway so i'm going to see if that blower motor there that i ordered for that 69 f-150 will work on here and it should and actually the only thing i really see that's different is this one is shorter closer to the firewall on this etzel here and you probably want that because you don't want it to hit this hood hinge here on this etzel here this is your clearance so you got this hood hinge in the way so it should clear I'll have to check that but this is a way to I guess you would say retrofit one in and then that's what we're going to do is we're going to retrofit one on that Etzel there and uh, it'll solve that issue because believe it or not all my vehicles now for some reason in the last month now I have done had to put a heater core in just about or some kind of heater issues. Now I got the heater core in this one. Now I'm gonna have to pull the uh, heater box back out, which is not a big deal on this forward here because it's simple. And uh, we're gonna use that one. And then I'm gonna have to put a heater core in this Etzel here because it's steaming the windows up. And I'm gonna actually have to put a heater core in my Durango. And that is a pretty much a disaster right now. I've been taking that completely apart. We'll walk over there real quick. And then we'll finish up on our. 78 forward because I'll show you all the second part of how to customize your heater blower motor there or what you could do what I was thinking about doing 
to keep it original but uh we'll come back to that in just a second here but this durango i've getting ready to put a heater core in it and it ain't been too terrible i got the dash out and pulled back and i got to get in this box here to get the heater core and the heater core is actually located we come in here it's right under here it's right under there and what i was going to do is take this top off because the AC does not work in this thing anyway, and I really don't want to take this whole heater box out just to get to that heater core. But I was going to take and uh, get a utility knife and just cut it all the way down and then take these few screws off the top. And there are two that are located the other way. They go up, and I was going to take and cut this off and then pull this section off so I could pull that heater core out and install my new one and then put the top back on and just seal it back up. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that route or not, but that's the route I'm really looking towards. But if I can get the right angle to pull it up enough and pull it out and be able to get the new one in without damaging it, that's the way I'm looking to doing that. But the heater core is so stopped up and ain't funny. This has absolutely no heat whatsoever. It's like ice when you turn the heat on. It's worthless. But uh, anyway, it ain't too bad. It's just a lot of it's just taking your time. Do not pull on these plugs or anything just be very gentle with everything and it'll go by pretty easy i think it took about two and a half hours to get this thing two and a half three hours to get this dash out and that's you know with kind of fooling around a little bit and just taking breaks and you know kind of on and off but ain't been too bad but that's where we're at on this here and uh so everything I got needs has got heater issues. My 69 C10, it needs a heater core as well. It's starting to leak down on the floorboard there. And uh, of course that's the only vehicle I have that's actually got heat in it and as warm as can be in there. But the problem with it is all the ductwork where it blows through the defrost vents on the dash and uh, with that truck being an air conditioning truck is either broken because it's got a little plastic ductwork or it's missing parts. So it's just blowing straight out underneath the dash on that truck. And that truck being factory AC is nothing but a nightmare and I really, that's one of the things I wish it didn't have because I can get a heater box for that thing so much easier to put in it. But the holes in the firewall, I believe, are different cutouts on it because I was just going to delete all the AC junk in it and I'll get this nice clean look like we got on our Ford here and uh, get the heat blowing out the dash like it's supposed to be and coming out the defrost and blowing out underneath the feet but uh, that's another story for another day but now anyway to get back on this F-150 here what you could do I'll have to because I'm thinking about doing it is I was thinking about taking this original factory blower motor out because it does work it does work but the bearings, I believe, are bad because it squeals like crazy. This, you've got two rivets on here, one there and one there. You could get in there and either drill them out really carefully or either grind them off, one of the two, and take this cover off. And you could get on this original here, or not the original, but this new one. And what you could do is take these studs out right here, and then this cover should completely slip off. I believe this is one piece and this is one piece, but you could pull this whole thing off, take your original, slip it on here, and re-rivet it back on there, and then you would have an original look if you wanted to keep it looking original. Or, is it, or you could take this one here. You could still use this one if you really want it, but it's kind of thick there. I'm not sure what the thickness is of that. It's a pretty heavy gauge, but... You could take and actually put a piece of sheet metal that's the same gauge as that, weld this up, and then just put a little filler over it and repaint this, and you would never know. You could do that route, too. Because this one, it ain't going to matter really anyway. Because it's got these holes on the front anyway. So as that fan is spinning, it's still cooling anyway, because the cool air is still going to go cool this thing off either way. But this one doesn't have no holes in it whatsoever. But I don't think it'll matter. We'll find out. But anyway, so you could go that route on it and retrofit a new one in. Because I was thinking about doing that on my Etzel there to keep it looking original. But yet, you know, be able to have new guts in your motor motor there, more or less. But uh, anyway there, that's where we're at on here. And because uh, the blower motor works on this car too, it doesn't. 
squeal or anything. It actually works perfectly fine, but the problem with this car is it steams the windows up and the heat just, I don't know, it's not very good. I actually like to take it heater blower, not the heater blower, the whole heater box out of this car and it'd be nice to uh, build a, just build one for it or either uh, run like a Chevelle style one in it because the Chevelle style would be a lot nicer but I haven't sat it yet but anyway there I'm going to give you all the part numbers again and I just want to correct myself that blower motor will work but you have to deal with the hole on it and you can fill over it if you want it but this is actually for like a newer style and uh, like we showed earlier in the video here this is more like for like my 89 f-150 it's got the tube on it so this should work just fine and uh because it really didn't change that much over the years now, this is for a 78 it's supposed to be and this is for a 69 i think they got them backwards in the system there because everywhere i looked o'reilly's advance um Auto zone, all them places online, couldn't find anything on it, and they did not show good pictures whatsoever. And looked on eBay because eBay seems like the source to go because got a lot of private sellers on there, and they have pictures of them, and where you could get you know better angles. So when they're taking pictures, you could see that hole where it's not sitting, you know, like that. And they take pictures of that side, and then you know they take pictures of that side, and you know they might take one in the front or one in the back, but they don't show that hole. Because it's sitting on top of it. See? It's sitting on top of it like that. It's so hard to find. People don't know how to take pictures nowadays. And it's kind of aggravating. You know, you need to take a picture of all 360 degree angles of it. That's how you sell something. That way somebody knows what they're getting. And if you really want to get more detail, you need to take in, uh, measure the shaft too if you want to make sure they are the same. Now this one is a tiny bit longer, but it will not matter. Not gonna matter. It's maybe a quarter inch longer, something like that. Pretty close. Pretty close. Just a shade longer. But what matters is it's gonna sit right here. That fan is gonna sit on top of these. And this should not matter because I was worried about this being raised a little bit. This one's a little lower. So really, it actually it'll work even better because you know it'll have more clearance on this one for that fan to spin. But anyway, here, I'm going to give you all the part numbers again. And what I would recommend, if you got a 73 to 79 F-150, this is a non-air conditioning truck. Now, the ones on the air conditioning trucks are a little bit different style. They have a plate on them that are made onto them. And then... For some reason, those are a lot easier, but I think they have the same issue too as they have that hole on them. So something in the system, somewhere in that national park system, whatever you want to call it, is basically listing it, listing it wrong. But uh, anyway, and I did check too to make sure, because one thing I forgot, I, better, I will mention that. One thing I do want to mention is they are both the same speed motors too. That's one thing I thought about as well is I wanted to make sure that the 69 wasn't like a two-speed motor and the one in this truck wasn't like a three-speed. So they are the same speed motors. Anyway here, that's where we're going to leave it and list y'all the part numbers again. The one I would recommend using for your 78 F-150, 73, 79 F-150 is PM351 that's the one I would use it's by Murray and you know that's all it really comes with it comes with the motor and then it comes with the packaging and it just comes in a regular old box it doesn't really come with anything else but uh usually they come with that little clip or the nut on the end because some of them have a nut that hold that fan on there but anyway that's where we're at but I'm gonna end this here so I wanted to correct myself you know, I am not perfect in no way, shape, or form. But I wanted to correct myself, you know. I did list the wrong number on YouTube. But, uh, so I want to correct myself. And I'll let you, you, the viewer, choose which one you want. And there probably are more part numbers out there that will cross-reference with this one here for our 69 Ford that doesn't have that hole on it. But that's the one I would list. And you could probably go in the system there and cross-reference this to make it easier but i could not find no good information on these trucks people were showing them 
had to replace like the heater core and uh, the blower motor, but they never listed the part number and they never listed this issue. I don't know why it's with these trucks, but I think it's something in their system they got it listed wrong. But I don't know if there's no such thing as a national part system or not, but seems like must be. But because you usually go to AutoZone, it ain't much different in part number than it is O'Reilly's, or it's it's in the bottom usually somewhere in the cross reference section. But anyway, so I'll let you choose which one you want, and you could take it a step further if you're restoring one of these trucks. Because I had to replace a lot of stuff. This has nothing to do with the fire or anything. This is to do with it's just worn out and the bearings are bad, and uh. That was the main reason there. So I'll let you choose which one you would go with. And then we're going to actually see. I think this will work on our Etzel as well. Because it actually is a little bit shorter. No, maybe not. But it'll sit more in the firewall anyway. But I'm going to see if this one right here will work on our Etzel as too. Because that'll be. We'll make a video on that too. About uh, putting a heater core in this. Because I believe the heater core cannot find no heater cores whatsoever for these Etzels here. You can't find hardly any information on it and uh, on some of this stuff because I want to go back and list all the part numbers for the uh, brakes and all that and actually the brakes was a nightmare if you go back to my videos there do not take a sledgehammer and do like I did and knock all the wheel studs out on the front drums there to separate the drum from the hub. Don't do it because it was nothing but a nightmare because you could not find ones that were the correct size and there would be about I can't remember exactly but five ten thousandths off and you could either basically you could push the smallest one that would fit or the closest one you could get you could push them with your thumb and the other one you could get you couldn't even drive it in it's too thick now I guess you machinists could turn them down or whatever and customize them in but that's something else for another day but you just can't find any information on this car but the heater core for the 78 F-150 here Almost is uh, exactly identical to this Etzel here, but I think might end up actually ordering a heater core for 78 F-150. I'll pull this thing apart and we'll measure our original one. And then the way the tubes are are very close the way they are bent up and to uh, that Etzel there. So this is our original heater core, and that one in the Etzel is very very close to that. But we'll have to check on that too. But you could always cut these off and, uh, you know, rebend them or something. But we're going to come up with something on that Etzel there because the heater core, I mean, most heater cores really no different, honestly. They're just, you know, how thick they are and the length and the width of them. That's really all that matters. And the tubes are just bent different for each vehicle. That's all that is. But. Anyway, that's going to be another video series here. And uh, we're going to end this video here. And I'll see y'all in the next one. And like I said, not perfect, but I wanted to put that out there. And uh, so hopefully you too won't run into the same issue and have the nightmare like I did on your 78 Ford. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. After 5 Auto, hope you're doing all right. Anybody watching the video, go check out his video series here. He's, I think he's building a Chevelle there. And a uh, real cool person. So go check his videos out. Subscribe to his channel. And uh, I will see y'all later.